Good morning. All right. This is going to be for factoring uh, a greatest common factor. It is the notes for integrated 2 for Wednesday the 28th. All right. So here's what we got. Greatest common factor. What is it? So a GCF is, I know I just said it, but it is the greatest common factor that is shared between two or more terms. So what that means, it is the largest number that can be pulled out of each term, or a more math, math term would be, it can be factored. It can be factored out of each term. And in a minute, we'll go into what that means. Okay, and a reminder, you cannot take out more than what the smallest number has. And again, we'll go into that more in a minute as well. Okay, tips for finding a greatest common factor. So for the numbers, for coefficients and constants, don't worry about the signs, don't worry about plus or minus, and just start with the largest number and then go downward in your search for a greatest common factor. The largest number and then go down. And for variables, like for letters, like your X's, Y's, A's, and B's, uh, it says the letter must be present in each term for it to have a greatest common factor. And if it is, meaning if the letter is present, if you have like an X on every single term that we're working with, then the greatest common factor is going to be the one with the lowest exponent out of any of the terms. All right. So identify the greatest common factor of each set of terms. So here's what we're going to do is what this really means is what is the largest number that goes into both 8 and 12. So think about all the numbers that go into 12. All right, so start, again, we're going to start with the largest one and then go down. So the largest number that goes into 12, besides 12, is 6. But 6 does not go into 8, right? It needs to go in an even number of times, right? Because 6 times 1 is 6, 6 times 2 is 12, that's too big. 6 doesn't go into 8. All right, so let's think of something else that goes into 12. This doesn't work, so we'll try something else. We'll try 4, right? 4 goes into 12 three times, and 4 also goes into 8 two times. So we found the largest number that goes into 12 and goes into 8. All right, there it is. Number 2, we got 12 and 27. So again, we're going to think. start with the largest number and then go downwards from there. So think about the largest number besides 27 that goes into 27. There'll be nine, it goes in three times. All right, and think about does nine, remember it also has to go into this number, but nine does not go into 12, so that doesn't work. So think about another number that goes into 27. There's actually only another one other option, that's three. So we're gonna try three. So does three go into 12? Yes, it does. So we now again, so we what we did is we found the largest number, the greatest common factor that goes into both 12 and into 27. It's 3. All right, number 3 here. Negative 6, 6, negative 4 and 18. So again, we'll, you ignore the signs. If it's negative, don't worry about that. We're not worried about that right now. Okay? So we're looking for a number that goes into 6, 4 and 18. And almost pretend that that negative's not even there. We're not worried about negatives when we're looking for the greatest common factor. Okay, this is when this idea is important. All right? So, we cannot take out more than what the smallest number has. All right? So, that means we can't pick a number bigger than 4. Right? Like, if I tried to pick 5 or 6, 5 doesn't go into 4. 6 doesn't go into 4. 10 doesn't go into 4, right? So I can't pick any numbers that are larger than 4. So that can eliminate a lot of possibilities to try, and that's going to save you a bunch of time, right? So be aware of what the smallest number is, and don't try anything bigger than that, right? Because a number bigger than a number can't go into that number, okay? So here's what we got. So looking at 4, right, that's our largest possibility. So first off, we want to think, does 4 work? Well, 4, you can try. But that's not going to go into 6, and 4 is also not going to go into 18, right? So that doesn't work. Okay, so we can try another number. You could think about 3, right? Because that works for 6. 3 goes into 6 twice. 
Three goes into 18 six times, but three does not go into four. So three doesn't work either. Next number you're going to try is two. Well, two goes into four, two goes into six, and two goes into 18. So there's your answer. Two is the greatest common factor right there. All right, so this is going to help you get good at division and multiplication if you're not there yet. All right. Next one here, 56, negative 48, and 32. So again, we're not worried about these negatives. We're only worried about the largest number that goes into each one of these, right? All right, so think about the largest number that goes into 32. Hmm, so let's see what we got. Maybe we could go with 16, right? 16 goes into 32, it goes in there twice. And sure enough, 16 also goes into 48. It goes in three times. But 16 does not go into 56, so we're not going to do 16. So we got to think of another number that goes into 32. And again, it doesn't, you could start with 56, you could start with 48. The main, th the main thing that's important is you're starting with the largest factor. Like start with the largest number that goes into whichever one you pick. So you could have started with 56 and then about what's the largest number that goes into 56. We're doing the same thing with 48 or 32. Uh, the main thing is you're looking at the largest factor, the largest number that goes into that number, whatever you start with. Right, so when I, when I picked 32 to start with, I'm looking for the largest numbers that go into 32, and then I'm checking to make sure that they also go into the other two numbers. All right, so we're on eight, right? Because we found eight was the next largest number that goes into 32. So we're going to check, does that also go into 48? Yes, it does. It goes into 48 six times. And lastly, does 8 go into 56? Again, yes, 8 goes into 56 seven times. All right, so we found a number that goes into 32, 48, and 56, specifically the largest number that goes into all three. So those are greatest common factor. All right, we got a few now with some letters, with some variables. All right, so let's check what our rule was right here. For variables, it must be present in each term. And if it is, it's the one with the lowest exponent of any of the terms. All right, so number five, notice we've got an x in each term, right? So it's going to be the one with the lowest exponent. Also, we've got to do the same thing for the numbers. So we're going to do the same thing for the numbers and for the x. Right, so it's the one with the lowest exponent. That's squared, so it's going to be something x squared. And then for the number, what we want to do is find the greatest common factor of 24 and 16. So just like we've done, we're going to look for the largest number that goes into both 24 and into 16. That number is 4. Right, you can try something else. Oh wait, no it's not. It's not 4. There's a bigger one. It is 8. Right? You could try something larger, like you could try 12, or you could try 16, but 16 does not go into 24, 12 does not go into 16, right? So the largest number that's going to go into 16 and 24 is going to be 8. So there's your answer. It is 8x squared. That is the greatest common factor. All right, number 6. Again, coming back up here, the variable must be present in each term, each term, every single time. Look at number six, right? We've got this one term, this nine. There's no x in it, so the greatest common factor is not going to have an x. So the greatest common factor is the only thing we're concerned about is these three numbers here, the six, the three, and the nine. So we want the, so all we're looking for is a number, right? There's no x this time because that nine does not have an x on it. There's gotta be an x on every single one if our greatest common factor is gonna have an x. Okay. So, we're just looking at the largest number that goes into 3, that goes into 6, and that goes into 9. Well, with 3, there's only one option, right? 3. So we got to make sure, does it work? Yes, it does, because 3 goes into 6, and 3 also goes into 9. So the greatest common factor for this one is just 3. All right, number 7. You've got another one with letters here, right? we got to check, is there an X on every single one? Yes, there is. So there's going to be an x, and it's the lowest power, right? It is the variable with the lowest exponent out of any of the terms. Well, the lowest exponent is this guy right here. It's that one with an invisible 1, 
right? Remember, if there's no exponent, that's like an invisible one right there. So it's going to be something x. And that number, right, that again, similar to number 5, that comes from the greatest common factor of 15, 25, and 10. So you want to ask yourself, what is the largest number that goes into 10, that goes into 15, and that goes into 25? It's got to go into all three. And that number is 5. So there's your greatest common factor. It's 5x. And again, this is 5x, and that's 5 times x. Not 5 plus x, not 5 minus x. It's 5x. That's multiplication right there, 5 times x. All right, last one on this page of our notes here. So we've got, we've got a lot going on this one. So it's okay to have more than one variable, right? More than one letter in your greatest common factor. All right, so we're looking at the A's here. Notice we've got an A in every single term. The lowest exponent is this guy, right? The A to the 1. So it's like A to the 1. Or we could say just A is going to be in our greatest common factor. And in the same way, we've also got B's on all of them. Every term has a B. The lowest power, this one right here. B power 2, B squared, right? So it's also going to have a B squared. And then we're going to come and look at our numbers. We've got a 28, a 14, and a 7. So we're going to look for the largest number that goes into 7, goes into 14, and goes into 28. And that largest number that goes into all three of those is going to be 7. All right, so there is your greatest common factor for that one. Okay, if you have any questions, please, you can pause the video, talk to your friends, your group around you. Um, you can take this time to text me questions. You can email me questions. Please, I'm available during class time, after class as well. Um, but you got to reach out if you have questions, and I can help you keep working through stuff or clarify anything if you've got any questions. All right, let's come over here, look at some of these examples here. All right, so we've got what is factoring? So factoring is the process of writing a polynomial as a set of two factors. So that's two expressions that get multiplied together to create the original polynomial. All right, and we'll go over what that means a little bit more too. You can think of it as undistributing. It's like doing the opposite of what distributing does. Undistributing, right? So if we have our expanded form, it's going to give us this fact factor form, right? 3 times x plus 5. And again, we're about to go over how to get there, so don't worry about that just yet. But here's the idea, right? Think about if I distribute. If I distribute this 3 and I multiply it by x, I multiply it by 5, 3 times x would give me 3x, and 3 times 5 would give me 15, right? So factoring is like it's undistributing, right? Because we're doing it backwards, all right? So instead of doing the multiplication, we would be doing the, the reverse of that. All right, so how do we factor out a greatest common factor? First thing is we need to figure out what is that greatest common factor, right? So here, let's figure out what it is. Same thing on that previous page. So first off, let's look at the x's. We ask, is there an x in every term? Yes, there is. The second thing, what is the lowest power? Right here, it is an x squared. So there's going to be an x squared in it. Let's do the same thing with the y's. Is there a y every time? Yes, there is. The lowest power again is right there. It's just a y or a y to the 1. And then we're going to come back and look at the numbers. We've got 18, minus 12, and minus 3. So we're looking for the largest number that goes into 3, goes into 12, and goes into 18. It's got to go into each one, right? And that number is 3. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, divide each term of the polynomial by that greatest common factor, okay? So we're going to divide each term by that factor. Okay, let's do that. So first of all, if we're going to divide the first term by the factor. That's going to be 18 divided by 3. It's going to give us 6. And then we're going to do x to the fifth divided by x squared. Remember, when we're dividing, um, when we're dividing, 
exponents, you're going to subtract the exponent, right? So x to the 5 divided by x to the 2, you're subtracting. 5 minus 2, that's going to give us x to the 3. In the same way, when we do y cubed minus or divided by y, right, you're subtracting the 3 minus the 1. y cubed divided by y to the 1. That's going to give you y squared. All right, same thing here. So we're going to do the second term. We're going to do the second term again, also divided by the greatest common factor. All right, so we've got 12 divided by 3, right? We're doing this term divided by this term. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. x cubed divided by x squared. That's just going to be x or x to the 1, right? Because you're subtracting those exponents. Same thing with the y, y squared divided by y to the 1 is, again, y to the 1. All right. And then the last one's an easy one, right? Because we've got this thing divided by itself, okay? Well, if you divide a number by itself, you just get 1. 27 divided by 27 is 1. 140 divided by 140 is 1. All right? So this just becomes a 1. All right. So... We've divided it. And then the last thing we got to do is it says write the greatest common factor in front of a set of parentheses and then write the remaining factors. The remaining factors, that's this guy right here that we just found, inside of the parentheses. All right, so we're going to write the greatest common factor in front. So 3x squared y goes in front. And then all the other stuff goes inside. All the other stuff go. Oh, I'm gonna write a little smaller. I'm gonna run out of room. All the other stuff goes inside. All right, there we go. That's a tricky one. They're not gonna get a whole lot harder than that. Um, some of those ones, like 21 down to 26, those are a little bit on the long side. But the first, like that first group up through 18 or 19 or so, are a little bit easier than the one we just did. All right. We'll do another example. Okay, so identify the greatest common factor here. All right, so first of all, look at the a's. We've got two a's here, or an a squared. We've got an a squared, and then an a to the 1. So a does appear in every term, so we can take out an a, but we can only take out an a to the 1, right? We want that smallest power. Let's do the same thing for b. So we've got a b squared, a b, and a b squared. So again, while b does appear in every term, the smallest power, the one that we can take out, the one we can factor out for our greatest common factor, is this guy right here, b to the 1. And then finally, we're looking at the numbers. So we got an 8, we got a 2, and we got a 4. So we're going to look for the largest number that goes into 8, 2, and 4, and that number is 2, right? The largest number that goes into 8, 2 and 4 is going to be 2. All right, the next thing, divide each term by the greatest common factor. So first of all, we're going to divide this term by this, and we're going to go piece by piece. All right, so we're going to do the numbers divided by the number. 8 divided by 2 gives you 4. a squared divided by a to the 1, right? a squared divided by a to the 1 right there. And again, you're subtracting the exponents when you divide. So a2 divided by a1, 2 minus 1. That's a to the 1. And then again, we've got a b squared over b to the 1. Right? We're going piece by piece. So divide each letter by the, that corresponding letter. So 2 over 1, we're going to subtract the exponents, and that's going to be b to the 1. All right, next, that second term, we're going to do this guy, the green guy, over our greatest common factor. So 2 divided by 2. That's just 1, so plus 1. a squared divided by a to the first, that's just a. And then b squared divided, oh, that's not even a b squared, that's just a b right here. That's just a b. b divided by b, that's just 1, so we don't have to write anything for that. All right. And then lastly, we've got this term over here. Don't forget that minus sign we had, that minus sign right there. And we've got 4 divided by 2, right? Same thing, piece by piece. So the number over the other number. 4 over 2, that's a 2. 
a to the one divided by a to the one that's just one so it, remember these are all multiplied together so multiplying by one that's not going to do anything and then again lastly b squared over b to the one subtracting those exponents that will give you b to the one all right so the factored form so remember factored form we're going to write that's this step right here write the greatest common factor that's this guy in front of a set of uh, parentheses. So we've got two a, b, and then the remaining factors. So that's gonna be this guy inside of the parentheses. All right, so inside of the parentheses, we've got this guy. I'm gonna leave our invisible ones on there. Plus one a minus two b to the one. All right, verify by distributing. So that means multiply this term by each of these. I'm going to use different color arrows so I can point out what I'm doing each time. Got a green one, and then I'll make this last one blue. Okay, so the idea is, is that when we distribute, it should take us back to where we started. So let me erase all this junk so I can point that out. All right, when we distribute, it should take us right back to this, right where we started. Um, I don't know what just happened in my previous one. That should be a Y right there and then a minus one. Okay, so we're gonna verify by distributing, make sure it takes us back to what we started with. All right, let's do the red arrow first. So we'll go piece by piece. Two times four, right? Multiplying right here by this guy. Two times four is eight. A times A is A squared. B times B is B squared. Good. It matches our first term. That's what we want. Okay, let's do the same thing for the second term. It's that green arrow now. All right, we're right here. 2 times 1, that's 2. A times A is A squared. And then we've just got a B. Nothing to multiply it by, so that'd just be like, it'd be like multiplying it by 1. All right, so we've got a B right here. Forgot to write the squared on the A. All right, and now. A second term matches the second term, so that's good. And lastly, let's do this blue one right here, this blue arrow over here. So we're going to multiply 2 and 2. Don't forget this negative that was out front, right, that negative right there. 2 and 2 is going to give you 4. And then you've got an A by itself. And then you're going to have B times B, B times B. That is B squared. And sure enough, 4AB squared. 4ab squared, it matches up. All right, you don't have to do that verification step every time. That's just demonstrating uh, that what we have at the end when we multiply them together, it does give us what we started with. But for these examples, all they're going to ask you to do is just go ahead and factor each expression, just like we were doing here. So follow these steps. These are the important steps. Find the greatest common factor. Again, that's what we were doing back at the beginning of the video. So if you want more practice with that, go back to the beginning. Look at the first half of the notes. Get good at that. Super important. And then divide each term of the polynomial by the greatest common factor, right? The polynomial is that, the big thing that you start with, right? And then you're just going to set it up in the factors, right? The greatest common factor that goes in front and then everything else, the stuff that, uh, the stuff you get once you do the division that goes inside the parentheses. All right. And remember the division is, is piece by piece. The numbers divide by the numbers, the letters divide by the corresponding letter. And then when you divide them, you just subtract the exponents. All right. I know this was a long video. If you have any questions, you got to let me know. Um, I will be free during class time. You can please reach out to me. I'll respond quickly. And also you can ask the sub questions I'm not, and I'm sure they'll help as much as they can and talk to your friends at, their, at your tables. All right. Good luck.